Well, today's Doctor Who video is going to be something of which that is a little bit different to usual, and certainly a piece of content that I never quite expected that I would be uploading to the Hus Productions any time soon. As in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at my entire Target novelisation collection. Now, the reason why I never quite expected to be making a video like this is to put it simply, around a month ago, my Target novelisation collection consisted of around only five Doctor Who Target books. However, recently I went to my local car boot, which for those of you that don't know, a car boot is basically where people can go to sell things that they no longer want. Kind of the equivalent to a market, or if you're in America, a jumble sale or yard sale. And at my local car boot, I found a local Doctor Who fan who was in fact selling up his entire Doctor Who collection. And I spoke to him for a while about Doctor Who action figures and big finish audio dramas, and after a while I decided to take quite a plunge and buy his entire Doctor Who target novelisation collection, and therefore, virtually over the space of a few seconds, my target novelisation collection went from around 5 books to around nearly 200, and I'm incredibly grateful to have these books in my collection, they are pretty much the majority of the target novelisation series from all of the classic serials that were released from the 1970s to the 1980s, and in today's video I'm in fact going to be taking a look at all of them, at the different covers and their variations, and possibly maybe Maybe even going into a few of my memories of the stories as well, if I've of course watched them. Now, I am aware that hauls like this never really come around too often. It is a very rare occurrence for somebody to be able to in fact buy pretty much a bulk of this amount of an entire Target novelisation collection and as I say, I do feel incredibly lucky and grateful to in fact have these, but equally their previous owner was in fact really happy to see them going to me as well because it's gone from one dedicated Doctor Who fan to another. As this video is in fact going to be a little bit of a long one, I do certainly recommend popping the kettle on, grabbing yourself a cup of tea, and sitting back and enjoying as I take a look at the many Doctor Who target novelisations that have been released over the years. As it all started out as a mild curiosity in a junkyard, it does of course only make sense to start off with the first Doctor era, William Hartnell from 1963. I don't in fact have the first Doctor Who story in target novelisation form, being an unearthly child, however I do have the first Dalek story, which is of course the Daleks, or Doctor Who and the Daleks as it is known in target novelisation form, as written by David Whittaker. Now this is in fact one of the only few target novelisations that I had before getting this wrong that large collection haul, therefore I do in fact have two copies of this release. Next up we have one of the missing serials, which is Marco Polo, a story that does intrigue me quite a lot, with a really lovely looking cover there, and if I get any time soon, I might in fact try and read that one, as written by John Lucarotti. Next up we have a rather lovely cover, featuring the TARDIS, Doctor Who and the Keys of Marinus, as written in target novelisation form by Philip Hinchcliffe. The next episode is one of my personal favourites from the Hartnell era, The Reign of Terror, pure historical set within the French Revolution, featuring of course Hartnell in his rather lovely French Revolution gear, as in fact adapted by Ian Martyr, Doctor Who's very own Harry Sullivan from the fourth Doctor era of course. Next up we have the second Dalek story, of course Doctor Who and the Dalek Invasion of Earth, featuring a Peter Cushion movie Dalek on the front row. Next up we have Doctor Who and the Zarbi, or as it is more commonly known as the Web Planet on TV, as written by Bill Strutton. Next up we have Doctor Who and the Crusades, as written by David Whittaker, once again a really lovely looking cover this time round, very colourful indeed, featuring a little fight sequence at the top there. Then we have an unusual print, in fact I do believe from the mid-1980s I think it would be, and it is of course the Chase, a First Doctor story once again, featuring the Mechanoids with the Seventh Doctor logo. Galaxy 4, as written by William Ems, now of course this episode features the Dravins and the Chumblies. I did a whole review of this episode, in fact, a few months ago as a part of the Demon Music Group Record Store Day releases. Of course, the original television soundtrack did come out with linking narration by Peter Purvis, of course, another missing Doctor Who serial. Next up, The Celestial Toymaker by Jerry Davis and Alison Bingeman. Then we have another later print, of course, featuring the 7th Doctor logo, one of my other personal favourite First Doctor stories 
stories. The War Machines, I do in fact have two prints of this episode with slightly different logos as you can see in different alteration layouts. Once again another episode that I have in fact reviewed earlier on this year as a part of the BBC audiobook series where I in fact taken a look at pretty much this but in audiobook form so check that out if you're interested for further information. Then we of course have the final First Doctor story and the first ever episode to feature the Cybermen. It is of course Doctor Who and the Tenth Planet with a rather gorgeous looking cover and a very iconic one indeed. I do in fact have two separate versions of that. Once again slightly different alterations to the cover. This one is slightly more modern as you can see. This one is a little bit more battered and a slightly different colour as well. And now we have the second Doctor era of course with Patrick Troughton in the role. An era of Doctor Who that does use the Cybermen quite frequently. Therefore it only makes sense to start off with another Cyberman story. It is Doctor Who and the Cybermen written by Jerry Davis also known as its screen name the Moonbase. Now once again I used a rather unusual cover this time round where we in fact have the Invasion Cyberman as opposed to the one seen within the actual story. We have another copy of Doctor Who and the Cybermen in much different alteration this time round featuring a more accurate Cyberman design and of course the more updated 80s logo. Very colourful indeed. Next up we have in fact the next animated Doctor Who story that is coming in 2020. The Faceless Ones. Very excited for that indeed as adapted by Terence Dix. Next up we have Doctor Who and the Tomb of the Cybermen. Once again using the Invasion Cyberman costume design. Although it's inaccurate I do quite like it on these covers. I do like it when they get things wrong. I find it quite niche and fun. It's something about the target novelizations that just adds a quality to them. Next up we have the Doctor Who and the Abominable Snowmen. Once again written by Terence Dix or at least adapted from an original TV story. The first episode to feature the Yeti and once again one of my personal favourites in fact from the second Doctor era. Next up we have Doctor Who and the Ice Warriors, another iconic target novelisation cover featuring the rather menacing looking Ice Warriors and of course Victoria looking absolutely terrified there on the front as well. Next up we have a rather recently found episode, I say recent in fact a few years ago, is of course Doctor Who and the Enemy of the World adapted by Ian Martyr. A really lovely cover this time round, very colourful indeed of course using the volcanoes in the background and we do in fact have two slightly different versions of that as well. Well, so fair dues, another one to add to the collection. Next up, we have the second Yeti Doctor Who story from the second Doctor era, Doctor Who and the Web of Fear, once again adapted by Terence Dix. Now, I've had this in my collection for quite a few years now. It's one of my personal favourite Target novelisation covers, once again, and I like this story that much that I do, in fact, have it three times. God knows why. I'm a collector, but hey, they're slightly different, which I suppose is okay. As you can see, the covers are, in fact, a little bit different in colour. Therefore, I'm not getting rid of any of them, like a true dedicated fan that I am. Next up, surprise, surprise, we have another Second Doctor story featuring the Cybermen, and this time we in fact have the correct design on the front. It is, of course, the invasion there with the unit badge and a really lovely looking Cyberman, almost looking ominous and glowing in a way which looks very cool. Then moving on to the final Second Doctor stories, we have the Dominators, of course with the Quarks there on the front, a rather lovely grayscale looking cover, and then just bringing in another book at this point in fact, I do also have the hardback version of the Dominators, as you can see a really lovely design on this, with a Quark set at the very front, one of my only hardbacks I in fact have in my collection, be a slightly different cover, and generally a very nice design from a library many many years ago that was probably never returned, but hey, that's none of my my business. Next up we have the Crotons of me and Zoe on the cover there and finally we have the last Second Doctor story, of course a rather important episode in Doctor Who history, the War Games with a really lovely once again grayscale looking cover with the Second Doctor in the very middle and the 80s Seventh Doctor logo and then finally we have another copy of the War Games as well, a slightly more traditional target novelisation design focusing a little bit more about the different time zones that we of course see in the early half of the War Games having a a Roman and of course a world war looking soldier there at the very bottom as well. Now moving swiftly on to the era of colour, it is of course the 1970s with the third Doctor as portrayed by John Pertwee, of course in his debut story Doctor Who and the Auton Invasion or as it is more commonly known as the TV serial The Spearhead from Space. This cover in fact gives a rather interesting design of the nesting consciousness there at the very bottom, something of which that we didn't really see too much of in the actual story. I in fact have two different versions of this once again with slightly different covers as you can see. 
Fantasy and slightly different coloured spines, therefore another variant to add to the collection, very nice indeed. Next up, the Silurians, of course based on the 1974 story, a lovely image of Nicholas Courtney there at the bottom, and personally I think the best ever design of Silurian that we've seen in Doctor Who history. Then we get the Doctor Who and the Cave Monsters, which is also known as Doctor Who and the Silurians. This is in fact exactly the same story to this one, however of course this is a more traditional target novelisation cover, with also very unusually a different title to the previous version. Next up we get the Ambassadors of Death, another really great cover this time round, a great, another great portrait image there of John Pertwee with some lovely colours in the background, along with the very cool looking space suits seen in the actual story as well. Next up we have Inferno, a very chilling cover once again, we have like a zombified person on the very front with almost the power station lurking there in the very background. The second Auton story now, we have Doctor Who and the Terror of the Autons featuring Roger Delgado there in the very bottom, a very nice illustration indeed, and quite an accurate likeness to be honest, with a rather unusual Dalek mutant-esque sort of nesting consciousness on the front. Next up we have The Mind of Evil, a cover completely dedicated to Roger Delgado, pretty much very nice indeed once again. Doctor Who and the Claws of Axos, of course featuring the Axons, and we in fact have two different variations of cover once again using some very different designs, of course rather lovely looking Axon there with lots of gold highlights of the monsters at the very bottom, which have in fact been coloured green, very much like a crinoid from the Seeds of Doom. Next story is Doctor Who and the Doomsday Weapon, I do believe that this is a story that is known as the Colony in Space, as written by Malcolm Hulk, I do in fact have two different copies of this, this is my original version, that is in fact a little bit battered on the corner there, but thankfully we have a slightly different version that is in fact in better condition addition to add to the collection. Next up we have one of my personal favourites of the Third Doctor era, Doctor Who and the Daemons by Barry Letts, of course featuring a lovely illustration of Azal there with almost a cathedral-esque church in the background, looking very powerful indeed. For the Dalek story we have the Day of the Daleks with a rather basic yet effective looking cover with the Dalek and John Pertwee on there. The Curse of Peladon with Agador rather brilliantly on the front and everybody's favourite, of course Alpha Century. Century. You can never beat Alpha Century. Next we have Doctor Who and the Sea Devils, once again two different versions of this. As you can see, in fact my original version there, and then a very different cover featuring some rather different looking designs of Sea Devil, both of them having a very greenish filter. And this one does of course feature the third Doctor and Joe, which is a rather nice variant. And I like it that much, I in fact have two by accident, but hey, I'm not complaining. Next up we have Doctor Who and the Mutants, featuring a mutt on the very front and a lovely illustration of the TARDIS exterior box, some lovely colours of red in the background as well. And then we have another version of Doctor Who and the Mutants, this time round it does in fact look a little bit more pastel in design, as you can see this one seems a bit more sharper compared to that one, and chances are, yep, this spine is also a little bit different, so another variant to add to the collection as well. Not necessarily the best story from what I have heard, but we have the Time Monster as adapted by Terence Dix, with a rather lovely looking glowing cover there of a crystal at the very bottom. A absolutely brilliant story next, we have the 10th anniversary special, which is of course the Three Doctors, featuring Omega and the first three incarnations at the very bottom, arguably probably one of the most well-known target novelisation covers to date, a really nice one, and we in fact have two different versions that are completely different for the Three Doctors. This is a slightly more modern-ish design, I suppose, featuring some lovely illustrations once again of the first three incarnations, really lovely likenesses on that one. Next up, we have Doctor Who and the Carnival of Monsters by Terence Dix, a rather unusual and unique Doctor Who story. Uh, like it or hate it, I suppose it's a little bit of a Marmite one, but very cool once again with a black and white Pertwee in the very bottom, very unusually. Next up we have Doctor Who and the Space War, or as it is also known as the TV serial The Frontier in Space, featuring of course an Ogron and a Draconian on the very front. I in fact have two variants of this once again, a slightly older version I believe this one is, because this one looks a bit more nicer in its quality and a bit more new with a green logo and a blue logo, so a slightly different print run that time round. A brilliant Doctor Who Dalek story now, we of course following on in fact from the frontier in space, it is Doctor Who and the planet of the Daleks, once again another one of my personal favourite covers, featuring the Doctor in fact pushing a Dalek with really lovely colours there in the background as well. Another version of that cover with a slightly different colour I do believe on the spine. And then we have a very sad story indeed, the departure of Joe Grant 
and one of the best companion departures in Doctor Who history in Doctor Who and the Green Death by Malcolm Hulk. A really lovely design there, featuring one of the bugs as seen within the actual story. And we in fact have another very striking difference in cover this time around, another traditional Target novel design featuring the Doctor rather brilliantly reaching up from Bessie, a very cool looking cover indeed. Next up we have the first ever episode to feature Sarah Jane and in fact the debut of the Sontarans as well in Doctor Who and the Time Warrior as written by Terence Dix and a lovely image of Lynx on this cover as well, a very detailed design with the Sontaran pod coming around the side and we in fact have two different versions of that. I do believe this one may be a slightly newer release as you can see once again. It does in fact look a little bit better quality compared to the previous version. Next up we have Doctor Who and the Dinosaur Invasion, a guilty pleasure of mine I must admit. I know the models in them are a little bit crap but hey, I love the story. I think it's very cool and quite ambitious. In fact, I have another cover of Doctor Who and the Dinosaur Invasion there. A very striking difference once again and a really fun design of having clack along there as well. A very comic-y design almost with the shadows of London in the very background. Another Dalek story, we have the death of the Daleks. Of course, Terence Dix once again with a lovely Dalek exploding that looks very painful indeed. Of course, a very large eye stalk in there as well. The return to Peladon, this time with Sarah Jin. Once again, Agador and an Ice Warrior on the front in the Monster of Peladon. Then, of course, finally for the third Doctor era, he does, of course, meet his end in Doctor Who and the Planet of the Spiders. A very interesting Doctor Who story. A little bit debatable in parts, but a cool episode nevertheless, of course, with the Metabolus 3 crystal and, of course, the Great One on the front there as well. I actually think that might just be a regular spider it doesn't look so great so I think it's probably just one of those and not the great one because hey all praise the great one and now regenerating into the brilliant and iconic Tom Baker to start off a seven-year tenure within the role as, of course, the fourth Doctor. Starting off with his debut story, of course, the TV serial was known as simply just Robot. However, the target novelisation is known as Doctor Who and the Giant Robot with a really lovely cover illustration there of K1. Really nice, she's shining and glimmering in the light. The next episode is Doctor Who and the Ark in Space with a really lovely illustration of the Wirral on the front once again a brilliant story and a lovely touch that this is in fact adapted by Ian Martyr considering that Harry Sullivan did in fact appear within this actual story and the same can be said for the next episode as a part of season 12 it is of course Doctor Who and the Sontaran experiment the second Sontaran story once again written by Ian Martyr or at least adapted by him for the target novelization series what I really love about this cover is of course on set Tom Baker did injure his arm I do believe he in fact broke a bone in it and I love the fact that the illustrator has not taken out the fact that he is rather awkwardly holding his hand. They could have very easily just drawn it to be different. However, they've decided not. They've decided to keep that in, which is quite a cool little touch. Next up, we follow on to a story that not many people like, to be honest. It's not much of a good one. It's just a story that's there, really. Only kidding. It is, of course, Doctor Who and the Genesis of the Daleks, written by Terence Dix. The foundation of the Daleks, of course, introducing Davros. A really lovely cover, once again. And I do in fact have this story once again in the hardback form as well, much like the Dominators I taken a look at previously. So I'm really happy to have this, a really lovely collector's item. Once again, a very similar cover art. We do in fact have a slight variation in the cover and the different colours on the logo. So much so, I have it a whole three times. So as you can see, this version is in fact rather similar to the hardback one. So yeah, Genesis of the Daleks is that good. You need a copy three times. But next up, we have the Revenge of the Cybermen, of course, the first episode and the only episode in fact of the fourth doctor era to feature the cybermen of course a rather lovely design there very unusual cover in fact because we just have tom baker's head floating in a rather unusual mist and i don't quite know why next up we have doctor who and the loch ness monster as it is more commonly known as of course the terror of the zygons with of course the lovely scarrison there and of course broton pointing rather unusually once again at a floating tom baker head don't quite know why they decided to go through this phase during this era of having tom baker floating Floating, but hey, I'm not going to question it. We in fact have another variation of the cover. As you can see, this one is in fact a slightly better quality than the previous one. Next up, we move on to the Planet of Evil, adapted by Terence Dix, and a very unusual illustration of Tom Baker on the front there. He looks a little bit concerned about something, don't quite know what, probably because there's a hairy man looking at him for a tree. Another lovely, unique cover. Next up, once again, a very similar case to the Genesis of the Daleks. Quite a dud one this time round. We of course have a story that not many people like. It is Doctor Who 
and the Pyramids of Mars. Phenomenal, brilliant, amazing, one of the best episodes in Doctor Who history and a really lovely cover as well. I kind of like the fact that Sutek's not on it, kind of hiding that mystery and instead we just have a mummy and Sarah Jane rather viciously holding a gun and a surprise surprise a floating Tom Baker head, god knows why. Next up we have Doctor Who and the Android Invasion featuring a very angry looking crawl on the front as well as Tom Baker being tied to the village post there as well with the rather unusual looking spacemen in the background. Another story that I really do enjoy, it's kind of an underrated one. After the Android Invasion we have Doctor Who and the Brain of Morbius. I don't quite know why but I think this cover looks a little bit unusual. I think it looks more like an informational booklet like the making of Doctor Who book as opposed to a target novelisation of a televised story. Don't quite know why, I think it might be just the solid yellow background or something like that that doesn't quite do it for me but we do in fact have two different variations of that. A slightly more orangey tan design with this weird lightning effect coming around the side as well so another nice little slight variation. Next up we have the crinoid Doctor Who story, Doctor Who and the Seeds of Doom as adapted by Philip Hinchcliffe with a very unusual black and white image once again. Tom Baker and of course Elizabeth Sladen in the very bottom with a crinoid monster reaching over the building looking very cool. Next up we have an unusual cover. When I put these photos on Twitter in fact somebody did point this cover out. I don't quite know why this cover is like how it is but it's got a very almost vampiric uh, logo this time around. A very gothic horror for the Doctor Who and the Mask of Manjagara as adapted by Philip Hinchcliffe. And I don't in fact think this is a Target novel. In fact, I cannot see the Target novelization logo on it. This is, in fact, from Pinnacle. That's why it's unusual. It's from a publishing company called Pinnacle, and it's a very unusual yellowy colour. Don't quite know why. That's not even a dated. I think that actually is a yellowy printed spine. Very, very odd, but a very cool cover nevertheless. And if you don't want that version and you want the Target novelization one, here you go. We have Doctor Who and the Mask of Mandragora. Once again, a more traditional cover with the Seventh Doctor logo this time round, with Mandragora looking very cool in there as well. Next up, we have Sarah Jane's Departure Story. Once again, another sad episode in Doctor Who and the Hand of Fear. A lovely cover once again with Tom Baker looking slightly ill, looking off into the distance. A rather lovely likeness, in fact, on Sarah Jane. I think they got that one spot on. However, Tom does look slightly ever so off. And of course, we do have another variation of the Hand of Fear, in case I wanted to have two. God knows why. Next up, we have another brilliant Fourth Doctor story, The Deadly Assassin, one of my personal favourites, featuring, of course, the Master and a lovely dripping blood design around the side. Very cool and kind of grim and gross at the same time, with Tom Baker looking very serious and two time lords there at the very bottom as well once again i may in fact read this one when i get some time it's certainly on the priority list to read at some point considering it's one of my favorite stories then we move on to the new era of the fourth doctor it is of course the introduction of leela in doctor who and the face of evil a lovely cover on this once again a little bit more simplified to usual of course featuring the promotional image of louise jameson as leela looking very nice indeed and we in fact have two variations of that cover i do believe a slightly more recent publication this time around because that one looks to be honest pretty much perfect quality don't quite know where that one's been hiding for the past several years but it's been hiding in a very safe place indeed next up we have the robots of death or doctor who and the robots of death of course due to this being a target novel with a lovely cover of course having the v3 robot and tom baker looking very menacing with a needle pointing it in a very threatening way next up we have one of my all-time favourites. I love this one. In fact, when I purchased this from the car boot, as I mentioned at the very start of this video, this was one of the first ones that I seen on his little stall that he had. Originally, I was in fact going to only come away with this book. It is, of course, Doctor Who and the Talons of Wang Chiang, introducing Jago and Lightfoot as portrayed by Trevor Baxter and the brilliant Christopher Benjamin as well, with a lovely image of Tom Baker as Sherlock Holmes on the front, along with Mr. Sin, and of course the notorious giant rat in there as well. A brilliant story, absolutely flawless. Much like The Deadly Assassin, this is in fact probably my number one to read. It is on the priority list. In fact, I may put that to that side. In fact, start that immediately after filming this video. Next up, moving on, we have another Fourth Doctor and Leela story. It is, of course, Doctor Who and the Horror of Fang Rock. A lovely solo image of Tom Baker on the front there with the lighthouse in the background. 
And then after that we have Doctor Who and the Invisible Enemy, an episode that I haven't in fact watched, haven't read anything from, and I don't really know anything about it to be honest. All I do know is Tom Baker, once again, looks a little bit unusual on that cover, may get around to that one at some point, we in fact have two copies, once again a more recent newer publication, as you can see in pretty decent quality once again, this one's just a little bit battered and ripped down the side unfortunately, however I suppose that's evidence it's had a lot of loving and treasuring and reading over the years. Next up we have Doctor Who and the image of the Fendal in a very bright and colourful version of the Fendal there, having its little tendrils coming down. Once again, a very cool story. To Who and the Sunmakers, once again, a story that I don't really know too much about at all, so I may get around to that episode at some point when I have time. Doctor Who and the Underworld with Tom Baker in a very unusual version of the scarf, a very unusual cover, in fact, as well, of that person sort of laying in that other person's arms. Very, very odd indeed. Doctor Who and the Invasion of Time, of course, seeing the Sontag Tarns invade Gallifrey, a very interesting story, also seeing the departure of Leela as well, very sadly. Then we move on to the new era of the Fourth Doctor, or kind of the third era, I suppose, of the Fourth Doctor period of Doctor Who. We have the key to time in Doctor Who and the Ribos operation, adapted by Ian Martyr. Then we move on to Doctor Who and the Stones of Blood, adapted by Terence Sticks, with the lovely creature that is seen within that story at the bottom there. Doctor Who and the Androids of Tara, Doctor Who and the Power of of Kroll. Another copy of Doctor Who and the Power of Kroll as well, but a slightly newer publication once again that looks a little bit more vibrant compared to the previous one. Doctor Who and the Armageddon Factor, an episode that has recently seen an audiobook version of it published. Another one of my guilty pleasures next on the second Doctor Who, fourth Doctor Dalek story, Destiny of the Daleks. We in fact have two different versions of that once again, a slightly older and a slightly newer version. Doctor Who and the Creature from the Pit. I've got that image in my head and I, I can't get it out. It's of the, yeah, everybody knows what I'm referring to. But yeah, I've not seen the actual story and no doubt I never will up until the complete season box set comes out. I'm avoiding it for as long as possible. Doctor Who and the Horns of Nymon which brings me to the question, how many Nymons have you seen today? Because I've seen seven. Next up we have Doctor Who and the Leisure Hive, the beginning of 1980s for Doctor Who. Of course the first ever episode to feature the season 18 Tom Baker costume, a lovely burgundy design, and of course the last season as well of the Tom Baker era, featuring a four Massey on the front there. Moving on to the next story, we have Megalos, where Tom Baker does of course get taken over by a rather giant mutant cactus. Then we move on to the next story, Doctor Doctor Who Full Circle, as adapted by Andrew Smith, the person who did also write the actual story. A very interesting episode, also introducing Adric in there as well. Doctor Who and the State of Decay, one of my personal favourites from season 18. A brilliant vampire story once again. Very dark and more traditional fourth Doctor era, as opposed to the rest of season 18. And then we of course move on to the final episode from season 18, and the final episode of Tom Baker in Logopolis, of course. A lovely Cover on that episode and to finish off of the Tom Baker era this probably should have been in the pile a little bit earlier on but we have Doctor Who and the Pescatons featuring the fourth Doctor and Sarah Jane. And now the John Nathan Turner era of Doctor Who fully gets underway, of course, after him becoming the executive producer at the start of season 18 and seeing the departure of Tom Baker, he then ended up bringing his own Doctor on board in the form of Peter Davison as the fifth Doctor, starting off with his debut story, following on directly from the Gopolis, of course have Castrovalva, as written by Christopher H. Bidmead, with a rather lovely looking cover there of Peter Davison smiling off into the distance. The next episode is Four to Doomsday. Day, not particularly the best episode ever, and we've got that lovely frog creature on the very front. Once again, the less said about that episode, the better. Following on to, in fact, a rather interesting and cool story, we have Kinder, the first episode to feature the Mara, and we in fact have that lovely haunting character from the dream sequence in the early half of the story where Tegan gets possessed, one of my personal favourite moments from the episode itself after watching it previously earlier on this year as a part of the complete season 19 Blu-ray. Next up, a very unusual cover, Doctor Who and the Visitation, as adapted by Eric Sayward, and just features a promotional image of Peter Davison on the very front, as opposed to a cool Target novelisation design. I admit, when it comes to the 80s releases, I do kind of miss the Target novelisation designs, because they have their own little quality to them that is kind of lost in these rather boring designs, but as you can see, it says at the bottom, a BBC TV programme with Peter Davison as the Doctor, just in case you didn't know. Next up, we have, in fact, a lovely Target novelisation 
novelization design which is black orchid this is the kind of cover that i like we have the lovely circus character of course that the doctor did pretend to be a rather unusual doctor whose story as written by terence dudley of course a two-parter once again a part of season 19 and then we move on to earth shock of course the departure of adric as adapted by ian martyr and of course a brilliant episode featuring the return of the cyberman to the brilliance that is of course earth shock we have peter grimwood's interesting story that is of course time flight time flight yes yeah, let's just put that to the side and not talk about that next up we have snake dance the second episode of the mara of course a very interesting episode once again i've not seen this one in quite a few years i think that i'll probably wait until when season 20 is released on blu-ray to watch that episode again next up we have moadrin undead i believe you pronounce it as once again written by peter grimwood and another rather basic cover just featuring peter davison looking once again rather sadly off into the distance in a rather depressing manner next up we have Terminus by John Lidecker featuring the Black Guardian and of course a rather unusual coatless version of the Fifth Doctor on the very front and I do in fact have two copies of that release which I think are pretty much exactly the same. Doctor Who Enlightenment as written by Barbara Clegg a lovely illustration of the ship there in the background. Doctor Who The King's Demons as written by Terence Dudley featuring Chameleon on the very front. I do love Chameleon. The brilliant Doctor Who The Five Doctors a rather interesting cover this time around a lovely glossy design once again very shiny and silvery and in fact says the 20th anniversary special first edition there at the very bottom as well so i'm very happy to in fact have that in the collection as a very special doctor who story indeed next up we have doctor who warriors of the deep a return of the silurians as well as the sea devils look he's wearing a pretty hat how lovely next up we have doctor who the awakening by eric pringle featuring the rather creepy face that is seen within the story itself next up we have the planet of fire of course anthony inley as the master once again returning of course this one's adapted by peter grimward and once again a lovely design of sort of a fire around the front very unusually a blue fire as opposed to a regular fire unfortunately i do not have a copy of the caves of androzani that may be one that i will add to the list in order to get because i feel like there is this very unusual gap between the planet of fire and this uh, story the twin dilemma of course the debut or the first full episode of colin baker as the sixth doctor of course we all know how much i do love colin so it's nice to have his debut story next up another one of my personal favorites in doctor who history the vengeance of varos featuring sill as created by philip martin a brilliant story i really do love it once again that is on the list to read at some point time lash as written by glenn mccoy another interesting episode next up we have the 100th doctor who novel introduced by john nathan turner as it says at the very top and it is of course the two doctors featuring the return of of course patrick troughton this is his second edition as written by robert holmes a really lovely cover on that and oh look the logo is also nice and shiny and embossed which is very cool as well sadly i don't have any of the trial of a time lord trilogy target novelized i may once again need to pick them up considering colin is my favorite however we do have some of the missing episodes that were then later adapted as a part of the big finish lost story series starting off with the sill and ice warrior team up story once again written by philip martin and it is of course a mission to magnus so once again i'll probably listen to the big finish version of that to be honest and then we have another missing doctor who story the nightmare fair featuring the sixth doctor and perry in blackpool as they meet the celestial toy maker again i'll probably listen to that one on big finish at some point now we enter the seventh doctor era with the brilliant sylvester mccoy in his debut story time and the rani once again this is the first edition as written by pip and jen baker a very unusual choice in cover sadly they've decided to go for just a picture this time round as opposed to an illustration because when they do do illustrations you get a beautiful cover like this as you can see doctor who paradise towers with the cleaner robots and the graffiti around the sides once again i do love the seventh doctor era one of my personal favorites and a lovely design of cover delta and the bannerman a not so good story it's a little bit of a crap one i must admit from what i can previously recall when i watched it a few years ago but a nice cover nevertheless next up we have dragon fire of course the departure of mel bush and of course the introduction of sophie aldred as the brilliant ace and of course a lovely story as well a great episode with that brilliant scene where i think it's kane's face cracks and breaks in that cliffhanger very grim indeed next up we have silver nemesis 
Nemesis, the return of the Cybermen, a story that I kind of like, some people don't. I kind of think it's a bit marmite in parts, it's an average one. Sadly, I don't have Remembrance, that is my all-time favourite uh, Seventh Doctor story, really do love it. Uh, Grit is showing the galaxy, another gorgeous cover this time round, featuring the Seventh Doctor in a floaty cloud with the, of course, the Psychic Circus in the desert as well. This story also acts as the introduction of Mags, who did then, most recently, go on to have a trilogy on Big Finish that I have reviewed. And of course, I do have another variation of this cover as well that is just ever so slightly different. This one does have a little £2 price tag on, but I'm not removing because I tried to and it nearly damaged the cover, so that is staying on there forever. Another Seventh Doctor story from his more darker era, we have Doctor Who Ghostlight, as written by Mark Platt, who then went on to create some superb episodes on Big Finish. Next up we have The Curse of Fenric, another one of my personal favourites of this era. A lovely design, including Nazi symbols in there, and the, of course, the more dressed-up version of Ace and the Seventh Doctor. Do, in fact, have two variations of this, a slightly better version that is less damaged. It's nice to have. And then we move on to the final two stories of the Seventh Doctor era, we of course have Battlefield featuring the return of Nicholas Courtney as the Brigadier, a great story once again adapted by Mark Platt. And then we move on to the end of an era. It is, of course, Doctor Who Survival, as written by Rona Munro. A brilliant story, once again, one of my personal favourites from the seventh Doctor era. And that does, of course, bring to an end the classic series of Doctor Who, because I'm pretty sure there wasn't a target novelisation of the movie. I'm pretty sure. I've never seen it, I don't think. But hey, my voice really hurts now. <laughs> And of course, how could I forget an exciting extension in the Doctor Who target novelisation range? We now delve into the 21st century era of Doctor Who with the new series and the Ninth Doctor, as portrayed by Christopher Eccleston in the first story from 2005, being Rose as written by Russell T Davies. Then we move on to the debut story of the Tenth Doctor, being The Christmas Invasion, as adapted by Jenny T Colgan from 2006. Then we move on to the 50th anniversary special, The Day of the Doctor, as adapted by Stephen Moffat, and of course the final episode of the 12th Doctor, being Twice Upon a Time, as adapted by Paul Cornell, and we of course have The City of Death, as originally written by Douglas Adams and adapted by James Goss, of course filling in the gap of the target novelisation range, as The City of Death wasn't originally novelised as a part of the original run, and of course most recently, literally just this week at the current time of filming, we have of course the target novelisation of Resurrection of the Daleks, as written by Eric Sayward, with Revelation of the Daleks joining it later on in 2019. And just to finish off this collection video, a few additional books I did get as a part of this haul. Some of them are Target books and some of them aren't. So starting off with a rather nice and new looking reprint of the Making of Doctor Who book. And we do also have an original version of that as well, which as you can see is quite battered and not so new looking as the other ones. It's nice to have two different ones. Next we have Doctor Who the gift set, which does in fact contain four Target novelizations, some of which I've already taken a look at. The Keys of Marinus, the Terror of the Autumn, and Megalos. The one that I didn't have in my collection earlier was in fact the Keeper of Traken, so it's nice to add that one to the collection as a part of Season 18. Then we have a few additional quiz books, Doctor Who Brain Teasers and Mind Benders by Adrian Heath. We have the Doctor Who Crossword book, randomly. We have the third Doctor Who quiz book. Once again, a nice design. I believe that's Colin around the sides there. Another Doctor Who quiz book with a foreword by John Nathan Turner. The Doctor Who quiz book once again, I do believe that's exactly the same copy, just a little bit more battered. The Make Your Own Doctor Who Adventure with Crisis in Space, once again the Sixth Doctor is in that, so I'm not complaining. And then we have the Companions of Doctor Who, Harry Sullivan's War, as written by Ian Martyr, so the very person that in fact played the role, so that'll be an interesting read if I ever get round to that. The Companions of Doctor Who, Turlo and the Earthlink Dilemma, interesting, I've not heard of that one before. The second Doctor Who quiz book, once again another quiz, Doctor Who Slip Back, as written by Eric Sayward, the first Doctor Who radio special, apparently. Other unusual books, I don't think these are Target novelizations. I can't see the Target novel logo on them, at least. But we have Doctor Who and the Vortex Crystal, a solo play adventure with the fourth Doctor and Sarah Jane. Then we have some more Doctor Who books, the Seeds of Doom and the Deadly Assassin in a rather shiny design.
again, once again, all the Deadly Assassin target cover on the back that I looked at earlier. Doctor Who and the Mind of Evil and the Claws of Axos reprint. Another one of the similar collection from earlier, Doctor Who and the Rebels Gamble, a solo player adventure with the Sixth Doctor and Perry. Doctor Who, a completely and utterly unauthorised guide. I don't quite know what this is, but it looks interesting. I believe that that is, in fact, the TARDIS exterior box that is outside Earl's Court Tube Station in London, so that looks quite fun. Don't know what that is. Oh, it's all about the different episodes. Interesting. I'll be looking at that later. And finally, we have Doctor Who, the Dalek Omnibus with Terence Dix. And I do believe that this features the Doctor Who, the Dalek Invasion of Earth, Planet of the Daleks and Day of the Daleks. So all of which I, in fact, already have in singular form already. But still, a nice hardback to have in the collection and quite a nice cover to end off this collection video. So thank you for watching this rather long video of my Doctor Who target novelisation collection. I hope you have enjoyed it. I in fact uploaded a very similar image to this one right now in front of your eyes to my Twitter and asked people if they would like to see a video discussing each individual book that I managed to collect as a part of my haul a couple of weeks ago. And I wasn't quite expecting the reaction that I got. I thought people would find it boring. However, it turns out Twitter spoken and they wanted a video of me basically talking about target novelizations for many many hours on end and now my throat is dying and quite frankly I need a good lens sip. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about these target novelizations then please do leave them in the comment section below and we'll reply to them at some point in the near future. And as per usual stay tuned on the host productions for brand new Doctor Who content every single week and of course I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.